What's good, beautiful people? Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, my name is Chrissy. Welcome. If you're returning, welcome back to another video. <laughs> tips on how to grow internally which I felt the nudge to uh, record this video I actually did this same video back in 2021 um, when I first moved into my last apartment and with using those tips that I'm about to give you even though I learned a whole whole, whole, whole lot um, from 2021 to now uh, really those five core tips really helped kind of get me through a lot, a lot, a lot of tests and a lot of seasons that I was going through in my life. So I'm going to share it with you and hopefully that it can help you. And we're going to do some makeup while I share these tips with you as well. Primer. This is Elf. So we have five tips. We're going to start from five and we're going to work our way up to one. Be intentional. Intentionality is the decisions that you make. When you make intentional decisions, you are allowing God to aid you in your walk. Intentionality causes for you to make a choice. Do you really want what you say you want out of life? Because if you really do, then you will be intentional about going after those things. You'll be intentional about thinking things through. One thing that I always say is people that are intentional are people who are thinkers. Let me give you an example. When someone is intentional in their life and they are presented with an offer, doesn't matter what that offer could be. It could be a job opportunity. It can be a love opportunity. It could be a friendship opportunity. They don't make a decision based off of their circumstances. They make a decision based off of who they are as a person. What that means is, how would this offer either benefit me, make me better, help me grow, help me get towards the ultimate goal that I have within myself, someone who weighs all their options, really think things through before they actually make a decision, is someone who's intentional. It helps rule out a lot of unwanted company, a lot of unwanted partnerships. Also with intentionality comes work. So that's why I did not put work in there because five years ago, work was one of my tips. You have to work. But now I realize that when you're intentional, the work falls under intentionality. Because you have to be intentional to fulfill what you want to feel, which means that you have to work towards that. In order for you to be intentional, you have to ground yourself, which takes me into number four, ground yourself. When it comes to grounding yourself, this one is the challenging one. This one is probably the second hardest one because in order for you to ground yourself, you have to sit with yourself and you have to learn yourself. In order to be intentional, you gotta know what you want. In order to know what you want, you gotta know who you are which means that you gotta find time to ground yourself. You gotta find time to ground the inner you, ground the inner dog, ground the mean girl, ground the fun guy, the fun girl, ground the hustler. You gotta be able to ground those things and sit with your soul. You have to allow yourself to reveal to yourself things about yourself. A lot of those things you're not really gonna like. And that's why it's important to find some grounding time with yourself to be able to figure out what it is that pushes your buttons, what it is that trigger you, 
what makes you feel the ways that you feel when you feel sad. You learn all of those things when you actually sit with yourself, when you ground yourself. When you start asking yourself certain questions that trigger certain emotions within you that normally you can just run from. You can go, you can just call your boo and sit on the phone with him all night and have good conversations and pretty much forget about, you know, what you're feeling. But you want to make sure that you're bringing your problems exactly where you are and instead of running from them, facing them and growing. Ways that you can ground yourself is actually sitting in silence, nothing, just in the room, just sit in silence and allow your thoughts to ramble. Because what that is going to do is it's going to tell you how you think. It's your mind, your body, God is going to reveal to you what your mindset is like. You allow for your feelings and your emotions to actually reveal to you the things that you need to work on because it is. It's going to come up. You're going to, you're going to think about the things that really kind of pretty much hurt you. The things that, you know what I'm saying, make you feel some type of way. Once you start seeing things about yourself, you're going to want to change them. Well, it's going to be up to you to change them. Which moves me into number three. Three to me is a pure choice, a pure decision. I don't think that, I think that it will get you a long way. Even though everything else is a choice, those things are like almost guaranteed to kind of give you a push in life just because it's action oriented and you're moving directly off of what you want and directly only what you want out of life and that sets a different vibration in the air third one i feel like is a true test of character and i feel like a lot of people have to grow to be of service which is number three Number three is be of service. When you would initially be intentional, and then you also find time to ground yourself, in those spaces, you become more humble. And so you become more understanding to human experiences, and you have more sympathy for humans, just because of the things that you've done and how you still have grace and mercy from God. Now that I've learned my lesson and I understand that I can be a good person by choice because I want to, because I desire to. So then now I'm of service to other people, which brings good karma into my life because that's how it works. Whatever you put out is what you receive. So that's why service is such an important piece to me because we all need help, everybody. So you be proactive and provide help so that when you need help, it's there. It's right there. Move to number two. And I have a little thing right here with all of them written down, so I'm kind of looking down at that. We talk to God. You can do that several different ways. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you two ways. And it's based solely off of who you are. So, what I'm trying to say is me, I'm a writer. That's what I like doing. I love writing. So I keep a journal. Or I wouldn't say a diary because I feel like diary is so played out. I feel like diary is like a 90s thing. I do keep a journal. And in that journal, I like to talk to God. Now, I may not say, dear God, or anything like that. I've been writing since I was like 15. Um, but I do come from a family of women who keep journals or diaries. My mom kept a diary, and my granny kept a diary. And my granny, she was the one who inspired me to keep a diary because she would always be writing in it all the time. And that inspired me to read to write a journal and so I've always been writing when I don't feel when I can't express my emotions 
I would mostly turn on music and I would just sit down and I would write how I feel until I've written down everything that I feel. And sometimes that's like four or five pages worth of writing, but at the end of it, I feel very, very good. And what that also does is it helps me keep my business to myself. So one way. There are a number of ways. You can also just use your mouth. You can also just open up your mouth and you can express exactly how you feel exactly in the manner that you feel it. You're not going to be condemned. You're not going to be punished. You're not going to be anything. You're going to be accepted. You're going to feel very light if you do it. When you talk to God, you are actually expressing to God the things that you actually desire. But when you desire it, it's something that's deep down in your soul that's tugging you, that's pulling you. And eventually, if you follow that, it creates action. If you run away from it and go, go towards something else, then you're suppressing it. But if you follow that, if you take steps towards that, that is action, which is actually intentionality, right? So it all ties in together, which is why these five tips are like so important to me. These came straight from my own personal experiences. These are things that I learned. And even though these just five, I got a shit ton of more. But these are just five that I'm giving out a game on. And these five are, to me, what were the important things that made me and molded me. You see, talk to God is number two. You go from the back to the front. That's why they always say the last shall be first, which means that you gotta travel through the phases to get to the front. You gotta go through the journey to get to the front. The reason why talking to God is number two is because before you explain and tell God what you want, you need to already know who you are and you need to already be granted. Because God is not gonna move unless you move. A lot of people always say, well, put God first, put God first, put God first. Shh. Don't tell nobody. But I'm gonna tell you a little secret. God really wants you to put you first. But yeah, if you want me to be honest with you, God is waiting on you to put you first. And then come tell him what you want so that he can then give it to you. I'm actually, in the moment that I'm, I'm talking to y'all, I'm actually having to check myself. Stuff like this is really important to me because I'm very keen on growth. Like I'm, a, I'm very keen on growth. I encourage everyone and everybody to always grow. Never stop growing consistently. Face yourself. Kill your ego. When you operate an ego, you make bad decisions. You do need ego. Good ego is good, but you have to know when to cut it off. You cannot go into a situation thinking that you are not, you could not possibly be the problem. That's operating out of ego. If someone says you did something to hurt me, and you say, it's no way I could have did anything to hurt you. Possibly nothing. That's ego. Because you do not know what you could have done to hurt that person. You gotta kill the ego and be okay with being the bad guy. A lot of times our ego prevents us from being the bad guy. And sometimes you have to be the bad guy in people's stories. See things from a different perspective. You have an open mind, which means that you're not locked into one perspective. You're open to a lot of different perspectives because you could not be right with the way that you think. To understand that you could possibly be the problem. Too much ego serves you no purpose. You do need ego. You do need a healthy amount of ego for confidence purposes. But a lot of ego is very detrimental to a human. Because you then start to look at yourself like you could never be the problem. But you could all be the main problem. Because you only attract things that you are. 
those are my personal top five things that can help you grow yourself internally. So I'll be right back to get some finishing notes to this video once I finish my makeup. This is the final look. We've reached the end of the video. I wanna thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope that you were able to gain some gems that I dropped and you'll be able to apply it in your own life to see growth within yourself and also in your life. I also wanna remind you to always practice being the best versions of yourself each and every day. Never let up, never stop growing, never stop grinding. Until next time, thank you guys so much for watching this video.